टुडे आई वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉमेडी आई वुड बी टेलिंग यू वॉट वुड यू कॉल अ कॉमेडी इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर दिस इज अ जनरल लेक्चर ऑन कॉमेडी एंड वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ कॉमेडीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टू वॉट पीस ऑफ वर्क you would give this definition that this piece of work is a comedy then we can say a comedy is a work in which the materials are selected and managed the stuff is so selected and so managed that it interests and amuses the readers the characters and their discomfitures are a point of uh, delight or they uh, engage our attention in such a way that we feel amused or uh, we feel very light about their discomforts and in such a way that at the end no great disaster falls upon the characters and usually the action turns out happily for the chief characters the term comedy is customarily applied only to drama it should be noted however that the comic form so defined also occurs in prose fiction and narrative poetry because the feeling of a comedy or the feeling of humor or a sense of humor or a sense of delight or a sense of amusement cannot be put into a watertight compartment we cannot say that only a drama has a comic aspect and the other um, uh, other aspects of literature like prose in prose we can say essays short stories or uh, works of fiction novels they do not have any comic element they do have we cannot say that they do not have any comic element they do have comic element but in literature we usually um usually assign this word to dramas a, a comedy or a tragedy we assign these words only to dramas and in that sense only we have further uh, categorized comedies into romantic comedy satiric comedy comedy of humors comedy of manners and uh, many other types of comedies too as first of all i would tell you what a romantic comedy is romantic comedy was very much developed by shakespeare and some of his elizabethan contemporaries it is concerned with a love affair that involves a beautiful and idealized heroine and sometimes this heroine is disguised as a man the course of this love does not run smooth but by the end both hero and heroine overcome these difficulties and they meet a happy end many of the boy meet girl plots of later writers are instances of romantic comedy even some of the critics have pointed out that some of shakespeare's romantic comedies involve a moment from the normal world of conflict and trouble into the green world the forest of arden in as you like it or the fairy haunted wood of a midsummer night stream in which the problem and injustices of the ordinary world are magically dissolved animal enemies are reconciled and true lovers are united and this phenomena which is very typical of shakespeare is in most of his comedies and then we have lost lots of feasts then we have social rituals of weddings and dance and in, in this way this comic plot 
which is there in the romantic comedy of Shakespeare has primitive myths and rituals celebrating the victory of spring over winter, winter. and most of these comedies are um, played in the background of forest or played uh, uh, are played in in a natural environment we have lot many trees growing lot many flowers blooming and we have hero and heroines meeting uh, uh, meeting uh, uh, meeting uh, in these forests and writing letters for each other or they are writing letters on uh, the barks of the trees or they are giving flowers to each other and they have um, the village life with the life which is you know a pastoral life uh, there are maids they are uh, they are maids who have cows and uh, they, there are uh, um, village boys and in 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 in, su in such an environment in such a circumstances uh, the hero and the heroine meet from somewhere they are strangers they fall in love and they meet happily at the end of the play. So, this was a typical atmosphere which was created by Shakespeare and his most of his Elizabethan contemporaries for his for the romantic comedies which they wrote and it was basically Shakespeare and we can say his role was the uh, most important role in developing th these types of comedies. Then we can talk of satiric comedies. The second uh, type of comedies in our list uh, are satiric comedies. Um, they attack the disorders of society and they ridicule, ridicule, satirize the violation of it, uh, of the standards of societies uh, and the deteriorating morals, the manners of the people. Uh, we can have Volpone, the alchemist uh, and uh, and Ben Johnson was the uh, very important writer of these types of comedy. He has targeted the greed and ingenuity of his society and uh, he has written about the stupid gullibility and racial swindlers and the uh, greed and uh, grotesquely ludicrous behavior of his age. Both Shakespeare and Ben Johnson have written satiric comedies and sometimes uh, to the surprise of the reader these comedies end unhappily. So, the rider which we carry that all comedies end happily. In these particular type of comedies, these satiric comedies, sometimes these comedies end unhappily because uh, as far as Ben Johnson was concerned, he had uh, one and um, only one motto that was to satirize the society and he had an aim to improve or to give lesson to the people of his age and in order to give a lesson or to improve the people of his age, he made it clear or he wanted sometimes uh, subtly to give a message uh, to the uh, society that if you behave like this or if you um, all, all the time flaunt the rules then what would happen is an unhappy ending. What would happen, happen is disintegration of society. What would happen is a uh, disintegration of the character, what would happen is a deterioration of social relations, what would happen is uh, a breakup in marriage, uh, marital setups and, and what would happen is uh, there would be a loss of faith, loss of uh, belief in love, loss of belief in sacrifice, lo uh, loss of belief in one's duties or uh, loss of caring for each other or uh, l loss of uh, uh, higher values of life and in order to warn his readers, in order to improve his society, he made it clear or he wanted it uh, so that the readers should be warned and given a message at the end by making these comedies which were running all the time comically 
but yes not uh, not in a very lighter vein because the the sting of the satire is always there in ben jonson and that is why these comedies are called satirical comedies the sting is um, or the bite is uh, very profound and in order to carry on his bite in order to carry on his sting he carries it till the end and ma makes these comedies uh, a sort of unhappy at the end so um, here i would like to clarify or here i would uh, like to extend my argument by saying that uh, it is uh, as a general description of comedy we say that com comedy is a play which ends happily or which ends happily for the protagonist or all the actions turn out positively for the protagonist or all the plots or the complexities of the plots or complexities of the characters or situations they are resolved at the end and they turn out to be positive for the protagonist but there are exceptions as well and these exceptions can be seen in ben jonson's satirical comedies where the end could be a negative end where the end could be um, a message uh, a bitter message to the society with uh, with a with an understanding that society would get a lesson and the society would improve then we can talk of the third type of comedy as we have talked of romantic comedy if i sum up then we have talked of satiric comedy and then we can talk of the comedy of manners these type of comedies were uh, exam exemplified first of all we can take shakespeare's example uh, his loves labor lost and much ado about nothing are uh, basically um we can say they they are romantic comedy as well as they are comedy of manners and then these type of the comedy of manners was much highlighted by restoration comedy in restoration comedy this form deals with relations and intrigues of gentlemen and ladies living in a polished sophisticated society and relies for comic effect in a great part on the wit and sparkle of the dialogues often in the form of repartee a witty conversation conversational give and take which constitutes a kind of verbal fencing match and to a lesser degree on the ridiculous violation of social conventions and decorum by stupid characters such as would be wits jealous husbands foppish dandies and then we can give example of congreves the way of the world the, then we have vitulis the country wife and uh, in these types of comedy the immorality of the people of that society the indecency is exposed and uh, the major writers again are uh, oliver goldsmith richard sheridan uh, they have uh, written sentimental comedies as well and uh, oliver goldsmith she stooped to conquer and richard sheridan's the rivals and a school for scandal they in a very very well uh, they are very well um, crafted Uh, to expose the indecencies of the age the double standards of the age the um, deteriorating standards of the age and uh, the uh, the exhibitionist behavior of the people of that age and uh, uh, loss of moral values Uh, especially uh, uh, men as well as ladies men who are all the time um, playing or spending their uh, money in wine or women or women who are uh, all the time gossiping or scandal mongering or talking ill about others or mag um, uh, their favorite pastime is uh, gossip or match making and they would ridicule or they would talk ill about everyone there would be not even a single character as is said about the age not even a single person or single character who could skip their ridicule and in this way uh, they would criticize the whole society while sitting in their uh, drawing rooms but uh, 
at the same time they would forget to see themselves they do not have any mirror to see themselves and this mirror is uh, shown by Rich, uh, richard sheridan or oliver goldsmith in a very well way that those who scan who scandalize the reputation of others they themselves are so much scandalized they uh, themselves have such loose morals and most of the characters of these comedies are um, given the names which suit their characters so th these types of comedies have this typical quality that most of the characters are also given the same name which which are the epitome of their own characters so when we have talked of romantic comedies we have talked of satirical comedies we have talked of uh, comedy of manners restoration comedies or sentimental comedies comedies of goldsmith comedies of richard sheridan then we can in 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 this line uh, we can talk of farce as well because farce is has also uh, an aspect of comedy just as satire has an aspect of comedy but um, uh, satire is um, more pinching it's more bitter and it has an aim to improve the society while comedy is a light winged uh, piece of literature it it does not aim or it, it does not directly target at uh, improving the society but in the same way uh, farce is also uh, one of the ways of uh, giving a comic flavor and uh, it's it's a type of comedy we can say designed to provoke the audience to simple hearty laughter uh, which can say belly laughs in the parlance of the theater to do so it is commonly employ highly exaggerated own caricatures character types puts them into improbable and ludicrous situations and makes free use of broad verbal humor and physical horseplay farce was a component in the comic episodes of miracle plays and in english drama farce is usually an episode in a more or complex form of comedy for example knock about scenes in shakespeare's the taming of the shrew and the merry wives of windsor or branson thomas charlie's aunt however an american play of 1892 which has often been re revived in a true farce figure throughout then we can talk of high comedy high comedy is a distinction frequently made between high and low comedy high comedy as described by george meredith in a classic essay on the ideals of comedy evokes intellectual laughter thoughtful laughter for spectators who remain emotionally detached from the action at the spectacle of folly pretentiousness and incongruity in human behavior we can say that uh, beatrice in shakespeare's much ado about nothing and mirabel and millamant in congreve's the way of the world have to an extent through their intelligence have passed this note of high comedy then we can say that low comedy at the other extreme makes little or no intellectual appeal as the title suggests it has nothing to do with intellect it is simply about jokes about gags about boisterous humorous or clownish physical activity and that is why it is called low comedy it is like a comedy in a circus where clowns perform for the audience and in those clownish scenes or in those clownish aerobics 
there is nothing intellectual but we can still laugh at their actions it is more of a physical action and less of mental action then we can talk of comedy of humors as we have already talked of romantic comedy we have already talk of comedy of manners we have already talk of uh, sentimental comedy we have talked of farce we have talk of high comedy we have talked of low comedy now we can talk of comedy of humors as the very word suggest and it has um, it has all the qualities all the four uh, humors or the natures which human being are composed of some human beings are very bitter some human beings are very melancholy some human beings are very sad some human beings are very jovial so all these types of uh, humors or all these types of uh, elements can be seen in those hum humor hum humorous comedies ben johnson was uh, was writers of such comedies then some of the elizabethan playwrights have also written such uh, comedies so for today i think uh, um, if we can concentrate upon what a comedy is there how many uh, major types of comedies are uh, prevalent in english literature and what are the typical features of each type of comedy if we can um if we can concentrate upon these aspects and we can uh, divulge upon these aspect as i have given the introduction and as I, as i have explained in my lecture it would be very beneficial for all of us thank you